and told him, when you get back here, I'll be coming back in from from Switzerland, but go right to South Carolina and just uh, look up uh, Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. Look up Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. And then out of that, other stuff will come to you. And when I get back, you know, have a, so I got in last night, and he left me a message to call him. And he said, you trying to get me killed? He said, did you know something? <laughs> I said, I heard all over Europe two weeks ago that something was getting ready to happen there. And they kind of hinted what it was, and I was kind of hinting to you what to look up. Now, you said something. The name of this is Underground Railroad? Yes. Did you know when Underground Railroad ended? No, when? In Detroit. In Detroit, okay. Yeah, and the biggest, you heard of Juneteenth? Yeah, I heard of it before, yeah. Okay, well, that's the biggest, one of the biggest celebrations in the world of Juneteenth. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is in, is in it's across the street in Canada, because mm. that's where the Underground Railroad ended. Right, right. And and it was the black runaway slaves that went to Canada that invented ice hockey. <laughs> mm. So a white boy by the name of Richard Stanley went to watch it, and when he ended up looking at him, it's called the Stanley Cup. Cup, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so and so now uh, Juneteenth. Um, that's a three-day celebration, June the 15th, 16th, and 17th. Started at the church where the shooting took place last night. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Yeah. Started at the place where the shooting took place last night. And out of that, did Mark Vesey and Marsh Brown, remember that? Yeah. That, under, that rise up. They came out the church. They the ones who invented that church. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it scared white folks so bad in South Carolina for 50 years. It had a state law that in Charleston, South Carolina, nobody could, black could have a church uh, festivities or church service without one or two white men being among the congregation listening. Hmm? Wow. Now, what, what day I said to celebrate it? Um, June the what? 15th. And 16th and 17th. And 16th, yeah, yeah, three days. What was yesterday's date, June what? Yesterday was uh, June 17th. You think that was a coincidence? <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> wow. Do you think that was a coincidence? Hmm? <laughs> now, let's, did you watch it on TV? Yeah, I was just looking at some of the footage today. No, I meant last CNN. night. Did you watch it? Last no, night? no, no. I didn't get a chance to know. Okay, for those of y'all listeners that watched it last night, let's go over a couple of things. All right. First, we didn't see enough ambulances or city hearses to take the nine, right? Uh -huh. They didn't let us know the names of the nine. Well, that's normal. But it's not normal not to be at the hospital where they are. The press. Uh -huh. there, there, nobody was there. Um, CNN said something today that was very interesting. The guy that's there on foot that been there overnight said the strange thing. He didn't know nothing. He said the strange thing about the, the, the cops and the, and the responders, the looks they had on their face wasn't a look of a major massacre. Hmm? Did you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, if you look at that youngster, they, they, you know, it's interesting listening to a uh, black, whole lot of black preachers. Hmm? And 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 I'm not one to put black preachers. I think the strongest two forces in history of America has always been the black woman and the black church. Hmm? Right. Okay. But to listen to these black preachers today talk about this incident, and when they talk about the youngsters that did it, they say did it, they say, well, it ain't about who. It's about what caused it. They say, yeah, wait a minute. You're right what you're saying. But would you say that if there would have been some gays that did it? Huh? Mm. Yeah. And, and the black folks, they know the black gay preacher. My mama and them did. And way back in those days, I hear them talking about, you know, Reverend Gully is gay. You know, the choir director is gay. But they make like to white folks that, oh, no, this could never, ever happen. Come on. 
Don't ask, don't tell. Come on, General George Washington. Where do you think he was wearing them tight satin pants and them semi high heel shoes and that wig and the makeup and them yeah. ruffle shirts? Huh? Come on, y'all. Yeah. Hmm? And so consequently, I listened to him today talking about, oh, what causes this? But homosexuality, they have it in the church. They know what preachers is gay. But it's a non thing. But here's some little guy that came in, the black church. You know he sit with him for an hour. You know? Right, right. Do you believe he could sit that black folks is so even he could sit there with them guns on and they didn't know it, huh? Huh? Mm. It's just like if you go to to, to Baltimore, the three day ride, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you know the cops never fired one shot and the riders never fired a shot? Did you know that? Mm, yeah, you told me. You told me. Okay, you never heard, saw one ambulance or heard one siren. And then they tell us, oh, those children cut the fire hoses. Come on, y'all. Do you know how they make fire hoses? They interwave in them steel and metals. You can't cut a fire hose. We use them in war. Hmm? Right. But as long as it's about a black child, even black folks are buying into that. Oh, them high school students. Went into the drugstore and went back to the pharmacist. Now, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Have you ever been to a pharmacist with a prescription? Yes. You give it to them. They have to look for where the stuff is, right? Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they open up one drawer after another. So my black child, who ain't never been to pharmacy, supposed to go in there and know where the drugs are, right? <laughs> you hear what I just said? Yeah. <laughs> but as long as it's about black. Even black folks buy into it, huh? They, uh, they, uh, uh, did you see the boy whose mother came out and beat him up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, before it happened, the news hit that, uh, she had, uh, six children out of wedlock. Did you know about that? Yeah, yeah, I read that. And then when white folks thought she was doing what black mothers should do, they stopped talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but wait a minute, when they start talking about making a mother of the year, the year papers went crazy, and you ain't heard no more about it, have you? No, I haven't. Now, let me let me put this to you kind of easy. Let's say that you had a son or a daughter, right? Son or daughter, that stole your car from the house, right? Mm-hmm. 17 years old. And uh, you get there, and the car's gone. So you call your brother and say, God, Mil- Milton... And left here with my car. And said, well, you know, he has a friend around the corner, some guys you hang on with around the corner. Man, he's probably coming there. So you get in your car to head by your brother's house, right? Right. And on your way there, you see your son then missed the turn and hit a tree and the car's on fire and he's in it, right? Mm-hmm. Now, when you run over there, would you beat him and pull on him or, or would you get him out the fire? Get him out the fire. All right, now, then let's say to this mother. Wasn't she whooping that child right in the middle of her arms away? Yeah. She didn't take him home. She said, this is your punishment. Okay? And the cops are there with the guns and the, the riders are there with the boots. And he's whooping. No, 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 no. That don't work. That don't work on everybody because everybody ain't a damn fool. Some of us have children and know that's not the way you do it. Huh? All right? Mm-hmm. But why does she? Well... One day we might find out. Now, when you, you stop and think about uh, the police, you know, it was 18 police injured, eight with broken bones, right? Uh-huh. Did you see that, that kind of ride gear them cops had? That's the same thing the Navy SEALs wear. You can shoot them and you ain't going to break a bone. huh? But long as we're talking about black children, everybody dies into it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so somewhere... When you look at that mother that turned in her son for kicking that police window in, mm-hmm. and they said his bail at a half a million dollars. Hmm? Mm-hmm. And those of you that don't know, you got to Google it. Now, you got the black prosecutor coming. And did you watch that film of the white boy beating up that brother? Yeah, I seen that also. Yeah. yeah. Did you see any black cops out there beating him and kicking him? No. Okay, now think about this. Because when the black woman comes in, the prosecutor, she indicts six people, three white and three black. Come on, girlfriend, you're going to do that. At least tell us where they were. 
Yeah. We've been looking at this thing for three weeks, and we didn't see him. But around the world, you can't call it a racial incident now. Hear me? Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, the little child that kicked in the police window, his bail was sitting at a half a million. Not one of them cops that was indicted had a bail set that high. And these are black folks hmm? in charge. Did you hear the black police chief that they brought in from Berkeley? Mm-hmm. And the black man, right? Right. Didn't you see him day after day say, we can't get no information? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I've seen this. Hey, black woman, you telling me there's some white police on the department that your man runs? And you the mayor, and they won't give you information, but they leak stuff to the Washington Post, huh? Mm. So, and we look back and say, well, wait a minute, who's in charge here? What is this about? Now when they said it was high school students, and the foreign press said, how could foreign students do this? Then the next day, then black folk came out and said, oh, it was the Bloods and the Crips with them. Oh, you had to add something. Now you're getting questioned, right? Mm-hmm. The blood from the crypt, right? Oh, okay. And so when you got three nights of riding and they declare martial law and bring in the army and national guard, hey man, it takes them that long to get their weapons. Or did somebody know something? Hmm? Shut the town down. Hmm? All right. And so somewhere when you stop and think about, you know, what they show us and what we look at, and the precious is the precious part of it. The precious part of it. You see, before there was a really terrorist action. First time we had it on our show was was at the Oklahoma Federal Building. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Now watch this. This here is one of the most conservative papers in the world. This is the Washington Times, and those of y'all that's listening. Can Google it. Wednesday, April the 22nd, 1998. Washington Times. Mm. FBI paid mortgage on Terry Nichols' home. The FBI made mortgage payments on Terry Nichols' home after he was arrested and before he was convicted of conspiring to bomb the Oklahoma Federal Building. Court documents show. Court, huh? In some punks in the street. Now listen to what the Justice Department The Justice Department spokeswoman said she did not know, nor she did not know, nor know. The woman said she did not know immediately why the government was paying his market. No, I didn't mm-hmm. know the money. Now, she didn't say that's not true. Hmm? Mm-hmm. She said, you be paying it, but I don't know. And you all sitting there listening to this crap and don't know what's fixing to go down? Hmm? Right. The mortgage payment was disclosed in court filing Monday by Nichols' lawyer who argued that their client did not have sufficient Access to pay a fine or restitution. This is court documents, huh? Mm-hmm. So when you stop and think about what racism and what you got white folks and black folks out here believing because of the ignorance, huh? Mm-hmm. Not white folks believing that if my dumb black child go to their school, their school will be affected. When dumb folks flunk out good schools, there's something wrong with your school. Hmm? Mm-hmm. When I can come into your neighborhood and drag your neighborhood down, then there's something wrong with your neighborhood. You can't go to Buckingham Palace. I don't care how poor you are for, and drag that down. Hmm? So mm-hmm. all of this now is all mixed in, mixed in, and somewhere, you know, I have the number one research team in the world. And J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI do stuff that would make Hitler blush. Hmm? And y'all think they are the most wonderful. Well, the, the people in Germany thought the Nazis was the best thing that God ever invented. Hmm? Hmm. Right. On 
the Chicago Tribune, Friday, March the 10th, 1979. So y'all can Google it. The FBI sent a memo to the Chicago Bureau to the guy with Agent Johnson who ran the Chicago Bureau about killing me. Do you know I got a copy of the memo before he did? Wow. <laughs> if you Google that, you will see FBI memo, use mob, front page, against Dick Gregory, the late J. Edgar Hoover, ordered the Chicago office of the FBI to develop measures to neutralize, that's a slick word for kill, black comedian Dick Gregory, and suggested that they get in touch with Narcos and Nostra and show them our files what he says about them. I said, they're the slimiest folks on the planet. And maybe they'll do it for us. Hey, I'm still here. Don't have nobody going. Hmm? List it in the phone book. If I thought the God that I pray to, not the church, couldn't protect me against slime and filth and degenerate pimps and thugs, I would cuss God and help them pull the trigger. Hmm? Well, mm-hmm. this is America. This is America that y'all love and you think this is... Hmm, no, no. Hitler, the Nazis, the Germans thought the same thing. Napoleon had the mightiest military that had ever been put together at that time. Hmm? He went to Haiti, and some Negroes that were not even making matches beat him raggedy. Hmm? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Nobody talks about it, huh? Well, what do you What do you think of uh, Dick Gregory? What do you think of uh, the the black pastor? Um, from down there in Charleston, South Carolina. He got on Fox News and says he thinks the recent incident was about um, faith and religion and not about race. Mm, well, how many times have you ever heard of a Negro say that? Hmm? Yeah. They say all kinds of things, huh? Hmm. All things. Hmm? Hmm. But what do that mean? Did you know Thurgood Marshall, Thurgood Marshall was a government agent? Hmm? Wow. You hear me? Did yeah, you know I, I, that, that uh, uh, Alex Haley never wrote them books, Roots? And all that mess, huh? Did you know yeah, that? You, you told me that one time. So this thing, but you can prove it. All you got to do is Google it. That white dude that that wrote the African, Alex Holanda, Kent Akuta came, Kent Akuta came out of his book, and that white federal judge in upstate New York, there's a trial. I, I told you, pull it up and look at it. He made Alex and the senior editor of Playboy magazine pay Colander six hundred and fifty thousand dollars and stand in his court and admit he stole all that stuff. That's documenting that. Huh? And so when you stop and think about you know, we've been saying that I just told you, we got black pastors that will ridicule gays and some of them are gay. Mm-hmm. So all day today, they kept talking about we need to pray for this young woman. Oh, well, I mean, black folks had to ask you to pray for them. Hmm? And so when you stop and think about it, and those of you that's not going to know what I'm talking about when I say that, when you saw him today on TV, you was looking at the Manchurian candidate. Hmm? Manchur- oh, Manchurian candidate, okay. Now go back and look at his eyes. Look at they blink. Then they started lying and say he had this flag on of, of uh, Rhodesia. That little white boy don't know where Rhodesia is, huh? <laughs> mm, wow. And all of my research people, we just knew they were going to find him and say he committed suicide. We were shocked that they didn't, but they put him on a small plane tonight so he still ain't out the water. Hmm? Mm-hmm. And so this is what this is about. Hmm? He... Man. He leaves one black woman alive so you can tell the world. Hmm? Hmm? You heard that, right? Yeah, 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 I heard that. And so now the FBI don't have to come in and spend seven weeks seeing if this was a hate crime. The FBI was already there. They got to go in and make sure it wasn't nobody 
that pulled something off that got away with it that they have to kill. Hmm? Right. Did you hear me? Yeah. And that's what this is all about. You have your computer with you? Yeah. All right, punch up the President Obama executive order. That's a law. Two years ago, he signed executive order 13603. <laughs> White folks, listen real good. Thank you. Thank you. Know your America. Hmm? Listen real good. Let me know when you got it. <laughs> Signed two years ago. It uh, is the law. Okay, I got it. What's it say? The, uh, okay, it says the purpose of this order is to delegate authority and address national defense resource policies and programs under the Defense Production Act of 1950. Executive Order 13603 provides the framework and authority for the allocation or appropriation of resources, materials, and services to now, promote... Hold it right there. What you just read, President Obama had the right tonight to declare martial law, suspend the Senate and the Congress, and declare himself president for life while you black folks and white folks run around playing games, huh? <laughs> now go ahead, go ahead and read it, and you can get as mad as you want. Who cares? <laughs> okay. Uh, contrary to a few initial claims, otherwise the order appears to update long existing directives that have been issued as far back as the Truman administration. Hey, they've, they've been tamping with that, and black folks and white folks have been so busy, white folks really, really. Worrying about racism, who gonna live next to him? You'll find out in a couple of months who's gonna live next door to you. Okay, go ahead now. And makes no claim to allowing the federal government to confiscate private property or declare martial law. In particular, this executive order removes the name FEMA from the previous order and replaces it with references to branches of the Department of Homeland Security to bring the previous orders up to date with recent changes in the structure of the federal government. Go ahead. That's all it says right here on this page. I'm, I'm on a Wikipedia. That's no, but that, 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 that's good, but that's a law. Mm -hmm. uh, what got President uh, Kennedy shot? He had an executive law. Look it up, executive law. It's either 11110 or 00011, signed June the 4th, 1963. Punch that up. You, know, you can do the same thing. Hmm? Give me that number again, executive law what? It's either 11110 or 00001. And Kennedy signed that June the 4th, 1963. And it takes nine months for it to go into effect. Okay. Let me... Okay. On June 4th, 1963, a little-known attempt was made... What was, what was the number on that order? Was it 111? It, it, yes, 111. Uh, 11110. Good. Um, it says start on June... Begin. Start that, yeah. Right. On June 4th, 1963, a little-known attempt was made to strip the Federal Reserve Bank of its power to loan money to the government at interest. And that's on, what he got shot for, and they may believe it was about his friendliness with black folk. Now, you don't have mm -hmm. to punch this up, but 100 years before that, in 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed an executive order to do away with the central bank. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And you black folks and white folks and male, you the same way them, them Germans were. They thought Hitler couldn't do no wrong. And, and, and all of that, and now we got an FBI and a CIA to do stuff that would make Hitler blush, and y'all don't even know it. Hell, you about to pay the price. And I'm not saying this laughing, because I'm paying the price, too. When they come to get you, and if you can, uh, if you can look up, this might not show up, because if you can look up Henry Kissinger's document on useless eaters, I want you to read it all. But we had to go to court and make them release that. That was under court seal for uh, 75 years. It was supposed to last. And we said, well, he wasn't the president. we we'll see if you can punch it up. Henry Kissinger's population executive uh, useless eaters. See if you find that. 
Okay, let me see. Hmm. I know. It's interesting when you find it, uh, what he got planned and the plans are still there. Nothing come up yet? No, nah, I'm not getting anything in particular. Um, Henry Kissinger and a group of evil old men way to deal with way, way to deal with population explosion. Try that one. Call useless eaters. <laughs> Still nothing come up. Give me one second. Um. Oh, uh, nah, yeah, I'm not getting anything here. Okay. Well, it's there. Y'all, listen, just play around with it. And also, uh, Michael Soft guy, him and his wife is in on it. Ted Turner's in on it. And when you see it, you, you see the document. Hmm? Now, you FBI agents that are listening to the show tonight. <laughs> Let me read something to you. When you looked at the Boston Marathon bomber, remember? Yeah. Well, here's what terrorism is about. It's not how many people you kill. It's about the terror you can put around the world, okay? Mm-hmm. So now, the Boston Marathon, I ran it five times, right? And if you was run the marathon... And me and you was friends, and all your friends and my friends, we come to Boston that week because the, the, the day that's run on Monday, that's a holiday hmm? in Boston. Mm-hmm. So we party down, man, except you can't party on Sunday night because you got to run the marathon, right? Right. So the next morning at 5 o'clock, we gather about 40 miles outside of town where all the 30,000 marathon runners have to gather. Mm-hmm. So it's 30,000 of them and maybe 60,000 of their friends. Why wouldn't you blow it up there and kill all them people since you're supposed to be a terrorist? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Why did you wait to two hours after the front runners have come in? Because if you would have set that bomb to blow up at the finish line, when the big boys, there wouldn't have been no more marathons for 20 years because all the big ones would have been dead. Now, that's terrorism. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Okay? And so now, let's, let, let's watch it now. So, I called my wife and told her a couple of researchers would be coming in quick. And I said, and, and let's keep you out on MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They do stuff that would make Hitler blush. And then call uh, Jim in Paris and tell him I need him to check and find out when the nuclear plant in Plymouth, Mass. When did the government shut that down? Because they got to shut it down because they can't believe that a terrorist might that might be a decoy to blow up the nuclear plant. So right. Jim called Leo. Leo called and she said, hmm. "He's right on target." I said, "What happened?" If they closed the nuclear plant down. On Saturday, the marathon wasn't until Monday. <laughs> Can't nobody close a nuclear plant down but the government. Right. The guy at MIT who was sitting in the car asleep and they shot him in the head twice, they never explained what that was about. Mm-hmm. Well, now, the mayor, the governor, the Ron Patrick, the black guy, mm-hmm. um, a press person asked him, said, uh, Mr. Governor, how did you find out about this? See, my daughter called me. Now, she didn't think so seriously. She said, what? I said, yeah, my daughter called me. When? About 15 minutes ago. And what did she tell you? She told me, no, wait a minute. The governor is protected and surrounded by state troopers, not city cops, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, they had to know. You mean nobody went to him and said, this could be a decoy to kill you? Mm-hmm. His daughter told him. Mm-hmm. Now, they're in the uh, FBI agents. <laughs> and you FBI agents, listen, listen to this. 
Mm. They sent them in to run the whole investigation, which means nobody could talk to anybody without being cleared. Mm. Mm. Being cleared. Two weeks after they got back after investigating, they were killed here in Virginia. Hmm? FBI agents killed in Virginia were investigating the Boston bombing. You FBI agents, you don't know what thug you're working on? Hmm? Well, all you got to do is, is, is Google two FBI agents died in a fall from a helicopter in Virginia this week. Okay, now here's, here's, here's what you got to look at. What happened? And then, if you look at all the stuff that they're doing, all you FBI and CIA, you don't know when they get through using you, you are useless either. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to scare you. <laughs> you are very scared. There is something stronger on this planet than the church that your agency can't manipulate. Hmm? Killing the real universe of God is like blowing up the biggest mountain on the planet. You don't have a nuclear bomb you can put between a pregnant woman's leg and make that baby stay in. You remember wimps and punks, huh? Mm-hmm. So consequently, those of us that do the research, we know that Ben Loudon was killed December 01. Did you hear me? Mm-hmm, December 01. Not that crap that they showed in the White House, right? Mm-hmm. So now, the you you know about the six Navy seals, hmm? right? Yeah, you, you told me about that. Yeah. Now it was more than just the six. Those was the one went into the room. Mm-hmm. Six Navy seals killed, at least five others injured. When they killed, it was like twenty nine people. About twenty of them was killed over in Iraq. These mm-hmm. died here in America. Hmm? Okay? Big, bad Navy SEALs. Hmm? Got killed. All you got to do is pull it up. Hmm? You hear nothing about it. You hear nothing about their funerals or nothing. <laughs> when they wipe you out, you cannot care less. So that's what this country is about. And a handful of us is trying to say, it makes no difference if you list truth. It never had to be validated by ignorance. But for those of you that are sitting out there that want to know what you can do, here's all you have to do. Not to the church. Pray to the same God that put the mountains here and all the oceans and the rivers and the streams and every tree and every grain of sand. Pray to that one. Just for every day at 12 noon, just for a few minutes. That the truth will come out. Don't get into your long bullshit prayers. That don't work. <laughs> when you pray because your house mortgage, you think the real God don't know your mortgage? Just do what kind of fool is you? Hmm? <laughs> Just meditate, pray for a few minutes. That the truth will come out of what happened in North Carolina. Now, you're not saying that the white guy will be found guilty or he won't be found guilty. You say the truth will come out. You can't manipulate You can manipulate the church. But you can't manipulate the real God. Just pray, and then you know your power. Hmm? We, the decent people, were sent to the planet hmm? to heal it. We joined it. Hmm? We joined it. Mm-hmm. Didn't heal it. Anytime light becomes afraid of dark, and all them thug punks, all them all them punks that you read about, the military and the generals and all that punks, hmm? we mm-hmm. the power. And the reason the CIA and the FBI can pull off all the stuff they pulled off last night and they keep pulling off is because we the light. You become afraid of darkness. That's a violation of God. When you become afraid of the CIA and the FBI and the generals and the military and the white folks that got the power and you violate God, hmm? the power is you. Let me let me show you how power works. The sun comes out every morning and smack nighttime, clean out the sky. Mm-hmm. That's the power of light. Hmm? Mm-hmm. So if we left your radio station today and went 10 miles down the road and went into a building tonight, 
ten times larger than a football field. And open the door, it's pitch black, and shine the flashlight, and in it, there's ten billion rats. Four hundred million roaches. All you gotta do is turn the light on, and they'll run. That's what light do to darkness. But when your light becomes punkin', and you get all washed up in racism, this, and racism, that, and white, and that, then you lose it. We have the power, not them. The Germans thought they had it. The Russians thought they had it. Hmm. Napoleon thought he had it. Huh? It don't work like that. Hmm? Mm-hmm. And all you got to do, if you go back and just keep your eyes on that's coming out there today. Hmm? He mm-hmm. sit there with them Negroes. And you see the picture. Now you have to ask yourself a question. Where those pictures come from? Those were the... Those were the the cameras that the church has. Hmm? Right, right. But wait a minute. Then how come we didn't see the massacre? Hmm? Who mm-hmm. turned them off? Hmm? <laughs> mm. We saw his car in the parking lot, right? Mm-hmm. How come we didn't see him getting out of it? Those those cameras belong to the church. How come we didn't see him leaving? How come how come there were no blood trails? Hmm? You gonna kill Nine people in close range, and you ain't got no blood on your shoes. Hmm? Hmm? Then didn't they catch you in the day? You were damn near asleep. <laughs> well, what, what, for those who don't know, Dick Gregory, what did you mean by Manchurian Candidate? For those Manchurian Candidate is a, a book that they wrote about before Kennedy was shot. Mind control. No, I tell you what you do. Why are we talking? Pull up. The Manchurian Candidate. Hmm? Let's put JFK in the Manchurian Candidate. And while you're doing that, I'll, I'll be telling the folks about something else. And when you read it, you, you read it. Those are your fans. Hmm? Mm-hmm. And they're supposed to trust and believe in you if you're done. And something's wrong with the show. And so, again, while you're looking for that, and then one day you all pull up Ferguson, and when Brother Brown was coming out of the the store where they say he stole the the uh, cigars, mm-hmm. look at those pictures they ran. He got on flip flops and short pants. Fifteen minutes later, he laying on the ground dead with long pants and long pants and Nike tennis on. <laughs> <laughs> it don't bother you? Hmm? You still haven't found that Benjamin County? Yeah, whole so much, so much popped up. I'm trying to figure out where to no, go. No, just just read, just read the top of it and see what they say about the Manchurian candidate. It's about mind control, hmm? yeah, and that first, should. What's it say? The first thing that came up was uh, some movie that came out. I'm it was the Manchurian candidate. They told you what they did. Yeah, do it, do it. It, it, it got to tell you what the movie was about up front. Do it. All right, let me just read this. Um. The Manchurian Candidate is a 1962 American Cold War suspense thriller uh, directed by John Frankenheimer Mm -hmm. and stars Frank Sinatra, Lawrence Harvey, and Janet Leigh. Uh, The premise of the film is the brainwashing of the son of a prominent right-wing political family as an unwitting assassin in an international communist conspiracy. So you got yeah. it. Now yeah. watch this here. They went in and paid them almost forty million dollars. Frank Sinatra and all of them to shut that movie down for X amount of years. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Because of people like us. You didn't have the radio station there. That's what they're scared of. Now watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. Right before the movie was getting ready to come back on. They had Denzel Washington do the Manchurian candidate, mm-hmm. which was altogether something else. <laughs> mm, okay. That's what everybody thought they was looking at. That's what everybody thought they was looking at. Um, while you're sitting there at the computer, punch up um, uh, February the 2nd, 2013, the Bank of Italy. Now, you can't get no dirty than them suspended all Vatican credit cards around the world because they're dealing in money laundering, the prostitutes, girls and boys. Just punch that up. 
and see what comes up. You got the dates, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. February second, twenty thirteen. Mhm. It says uh, it says the scandal at the Vatican. Okay, here it goes. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me click on it. The Bank of Italy suspended electronic payments in the Vatican City because the papal state doesn't comply with international money laundering rules. <laughs> That's just money, drug money, little children. And the Swiss bank came in. And gave them credit. Go ahead, give me. <laughs> the Central Bank found an inspection in 2010 that Douche Bank AG's Italian unit, which had been operating the Papal State's point of service payment services since 1997, didn't have the authorization to operate in the Vatican City, a Bank of Italy official said. The Central Bank on December 6th refused a permit request to Dutch Bank uh, because the Vatican lacks. Uh, required banking and financial legislation, the official said. Uh, and that's all it says here. Well, no, but here's what we're saying. This is, nobody knows this. Hmm? Now, all all the Vatican credit cards were well, suspended, and then the, the Swedish bank came in and, and granted them credit. That's how they saw it. That's okay. It happens every day. Hmm? Every day. And so what you're looking at down there is the Manchurian candidate. Hmm? And uh, I looked at that, that little young boy today, and I just felt so sorry for him. He looked like anybody's little child, except when them thugs on the ad get to tell you what he did and all of that, then he starts looking different. Hmm? Mm-hmm. And the question have to be asked is who shut the cameras off when he's killing them folks? They had two people going to the hospital. One of them we can't account for. Hmm? What's mm-hmm. that about? Hmm? Mm-hmm. What's that about? Hmm? Well, one of the first things Obama said was um, um, when when asked about it, he said he what he saw was someone who wanted to inflict harm had no problem getting their hands on a gun. So mm-hmm. people immediately started saying that this is their way to get uh, take away people's rights to own guns. What do you think about that? No, I don't, I don't even get into that. Ain't no bullshit, man. Let, let, let mm-hmm. me show you something. Yeah, let, let me show you something here. Hmm. Go back and say what Obama said again. Uh, Obama said someone who wanted to inflict harm had no problem getting their hands okay, on a gun. Okay, now watch this. Watch this. Punch up. There's almost 150 major cities in America where the cops have ran out of bullets, okay? Punch that up. Why? Because Homeland Security bought 1.5 billion bullets. Punch that up. Since you Americans think you're safe. You see it? You see it. Computer's running slow here. One second. Mm -hmm. And so, all all you fathers out there, get ready to have your day, Hmm? which I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. Okay. This is in um, uh, all these ads come up. It's hard to look at things now. Okay, Mm -hmm. this is uh, in Forbes. The... uh, let me get rid of that. Okay, it says that the the title is 1.6 billion rounds of ammo for Homeland Security. Mm-hmm. It's time Wait, for ho, ho, ho. Yeah. And what day will you Americans who think you free get tired of people like me with my life on the line have to tell y'all what's fixing to happen? And the fact that you won't listen, you'll listen in two months, okay? And I'm not saying that being facetious. Okay, go ahead, brother. Okay. Uh, The Denver Post on February 15th ran an Associated Press article entitled, Homeland Security Aims to Buy 1.6 Billion Rounds of Ammo. It confirmed that the Department of Homeland Security issued an open purchase order for 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition. So this purchase order is for hollow-point rounds forbidden by international law 
for use in war, along with the frightening amount of specialized for snipers. Also reported elsewhere, at the height of the Iraq war, the Army was expending less than 6 million rounds a month. Therefore, 1.6 billion rounds would be enough to sustain a hot war for 20-plus years in America. <laughs> Wait, did y'all hear that? Y'all <laughs> go ahead. Add to this perplexing, uh, perplexing purchase of ammo, DHS now is shown off its acquisition of heavily armored personal carriers um, from the Iraqi and Afgra- Afghani fetters uh, of operation. Then it goes on. That's it. Okay, then, then, then just do this here. Put put in there the shortage, police shortage of, of bullets in many American cities and see what comes out. And so, thank okay. God for radio like yours and, and around the world. What NBC and CBC and ABC used to get away with, they can't get away with. Them. Okay, um, this is on Alex Jones. Alex Jones' channel came up first. Mm-hmm. It says uh, nationwide ammo shortage so severe that even cops can't buy bullets. Ammo res- rationing imminent. Okay, now let me say this. Yeah. The last thing I do is scare you. But you black folks and white folks sitting out there with your little raggedy guns, the police going to protect you. Hmm. They ain't going to have no bullets to protect you with. Hmm. But y'all go on and drink your little martinis and have fun and get into your little sex bull. And when you hear it coming, see if you have a desire for sex. Hmm. Hmm. See if you feel like getting drunk. Hmm. So you heard it. I don't care if you do anything with it or not. I stopped smoking. Well, I was smoking four packs of cigarettes a day. When I saw the research that cigarette smoking started cancer, I stopped that day. Everybody can't stop that that quick. But I'm saying that's why I stopped. That's why I stopped. And so y'all go ahead and play your game. The economy. Y'all don't know nothing about no economy. Every 15 minutes, they talk to you about Wall Street. You don't know nothing about Wall Street. Hmm? <laughs> but all you got to do is turn on TV. When white folks say buy one suit and get seven free, <laughs> you can't figure what's wrong. Right, right. Make you some ties and some shirts on the way out. Hmm? Uh-huh. And so that's what this is about. Hmm? Somewhere. Somewhere. And I just thank God for you and people like you who let America hear this other voice. Most of the folks, they're sincere, but they don't know how rigid this thing is. Hmm? Mm-hmm. They don't understand. White folks don't even understand white supremacy. Hmm? Mm-hmm. You have white folks believing that black folk can be racist. The word racism means the ability to control somebody else's faith and destiny. I don't care how bad some black person hate white. We don't have the power to see to it. Your children go to bad schools. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Hmm? This is the case. But that's what prejudice and racism do. It make you make all kind of mistakes while the super rich. Hmm? While the super rich. Hmm? You can see one black man's face while they mark his teeth. Huh? Mm-hmm. But y'all don't like black folks? Who cares? Hmm? Who cares? Then the black folks that care, they don't come. You can see one black person ripping off your computers to get all your information in a damn thing you're going to do, but they just told you. If you think America's so stupid that they say some thug could do something the Russians can't do, hmm? mm-hmm. and you ain't going to do nothing about it because you know they will blow your brains out. You can pick on some Negroes that ain't going to bother you at all, some black father, and hear this black father for Father's Day. You gonna teach your little son, your little punky self, that is a white racist cop that will kill your son, and you tell that son to behave. Don't talk too fast. It's a violation of the real God to teach your child to behave filth. Hmm? And then look at white folks. They say, look, 
cop, this is my boy, mess with him and your family's in trouble. But you punks, huh? And don't talk about you ain't violent. You let your children go. The church let black folk go to war and kill people and do all kinds of stuff, and then they come home. But wait a minute. The question that somebody, somebody got to ask one day, hmm, this question, with all the money and all the good hospitals we got, my soldiers come back home and... 47 of them commit suicide every day, but the Vietnamese is not committing suicide. Hmm? Mm. Okay. The Koreans is not committing suicide. They don't have no hospitals. Huh? They don't have the research. Why? <laughs> Look, I don't care what religion you are in America, you all know about the Ten Commandments, even if you don't believe in it. God shall not kill. You heard that was you as a child, and you can't erase it out. So while you're over there killing, that thing is right there eating you away. And when you come back, you come back and turn on TV and they begging folks to send money in for vet. They ain't never beg for no money to buy a damn tank. Hmm? They ain't never beg for no money to drop all their old stuff on women and children all over the world. Hmm? And so that's what this is about. And so as a father of 10 black children, 10 black, 13 great grand. A thirteen grand and one great grand. Father's Day is Monday, and I run for my children. <laughs> and you fathers should know it's something wrong. Look what they give your wife, and then look at them old funny socks they give you, and them old funny ties. Look like <laughs> 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 look like something that people on death row wouldn't even wear. <laughs> oh, and speaking about them two thugs that broke out of jail in New York. Yeah, I know. I know. I know Hillary, man. You know why? Why? That jail is located in Clinton County. <laughs> wow. Well, wait a minute. Did you know that they had to lift a manhole? No, no. 150 pounds, they had to have a ladder, seven foot, three tall to do it. Hmm? Mm-mm. No, I didn't and know that. you all stupid enough to believe all that stuff went on in that jail and didn't nobody know it? Hmm? Didn't nobody know us. So who did who, who they work for? Probably the government. Mm-hmm. They got an assignment. We're going to let you out. Man. I'm not going to find you. Hmm? With the stuff we got, man, we can we can tell the size of a, of, of, of a mosquito's nose from outer space. Okay. Outer space. We have a train that runs from California to New York underground in 48 minutes. Pay for with your money and you don't know nothing about it. When somebody like me come around trying to tell you, you who cares what you believe, huh? Mm. And so somewhere, somewhere, so we'll we get to retrain the cops. What do you mean? Retrain a bird dog to, to take tigers? Every time they see a bird, they're going to stop and kill one. Hmm? Mm-hmm. This is a game. When I was a little child, all my friends, man, we didn't know nothing about police behavior. We just know we ain't never wanted a police car for Christmas, huh? We wanted a fire truck, huh? You hear me? Mm-hmm. And as a little boy, I didn't learn this from my mama or nobody, nobody. Whenever I heard a siren, I prayed a prayer. Mm-hmm. Every time I saw an ambulance or a fire truck or a cop car, I never thought I would see the day. Police behavior would make me say this prayer, God. Uh, police just said, please bless them and protect them where they're going, protect the people they're going to. Hmm? Okay, I never thought I would have to say that prayer. Hmm? But I say it every time I hear a siren. Hmm? And when you hear people say, all cops are not bad, do you know how many doctors have to put them in because of malpractice? I don't hear nobody say, all doctors is not bad. Hmm? Right, right. You know how many lawyers get busted? They have to leave. I don't hear nobody say, oh, lawyers are not bad. Come on, y'all. Y'all stop being crazy. Hmm? And the cops don't tell you something that your your union won't tell you with them thugs. Huh? If you have uh, some children or grandchildren in your house now, and you had wallpaper on the wall with lead paint in it, your children will end up with lead poison. Are you so stupid you don't know? That when lead bullets around your 